All right, welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of my FX Buddies, the podcast. And I say podcast because, uh, forgive me, that came on loud on the sudden. Is that turning it down? I don't think so. There we go. There we go. All right. (laughs) Okay. So, um, it's episode 39, I believe. That's what we're going with. 39. All right. So I say podcast because there's a blog, which is located, right? Myfxbuddies.blogspot.com. And then there's a video, which is also on the blog. And if you're looking at this on YouTube, you are not watching a video. You're listening to the podcast, which is why the image doesn't change. And if you'd like to see the video, when I say, look here, look, see, then you would actually see the things that I'm referencing to. That's on the blog or Rumble, but you don't have to go to Rumble because it's the exact same video. But if you like Rumble, my FX buddies, it'll be the exact same video there. But then it won't have the full articles, right? And why do I think that is important? Because what I highlight out of an article may not be what you would highlight. So just like everyone is all excited about, ooh, the motorcade, the motorcade. And I'm like, I don't know. Once you've seen one motorcade, I think you've seen them all. (laughs) <laughs> but you know whatever right everyone's different that's the beauty of uh i won't go there but anyway everyone's different everyone thinks something has a higher priority than something else and that's lovely okay so we'll get into it because i i it is right now it is currently april 14th but this won't make it to be uploaded so this will be uploaded on april 15th and depending on the excitement of April 15th, I don't know, I might post again. But let's get into it. So, um, the why did I choose this beautiful lady? I'll tell you why in a minute. The Sudanese visit to Washington is important and will restore stability to the dinar price. Now, I don't want stability to the dinar price. I want improvement, right? We want improvement to the dinar price. But, you know. They can only put so much in writing. And I was even surprised that she would say that. Okay, she's very critical. She's not a Maliki person. She's the head of the new generation parliamentary bloc. So um, she's very critical of everything, which doesn't necessarily mean she doesn't like Sadani. It's just she wants accountability right so um i thought it was very interesting for her and that's not just the title that sentence actually is in see it's the last sentence of the article also so she says the prime minister and her name is uh i don't know see right there so yeah whatever (laughs) <laughs> so um the the prime minister's visit to the united states of america comes at an important time and will be a transition towards a new phase of relations especially since the visit is evidence of the iraqi desire to build a sustainable strategic partnership based on mutual respect so we're hearing that partnership build a partnership that to me indicates they know we're not leaving but we need a better we need more equity right in this partnership (laughs) so uh, it's interesting if you really look at the words but then the files that will be discussed whether economic security or political must certainly benefit iraq and have a role in the recovery of the economy and the return of stability to the dinar price i would even like recovery of the dinar price right i would like that better than just stability it's been stable right it's stable in the wrong direction but anyway so okay now 
this is a good article um of i think monday sunday and monday but i will tell you there's a document out it's a 40 page what are those things pdfs that should not be out it has way too much information i'm not even posting it i'm not sharing it um if i was a diplomat and all this information was out on my delegation and me i would be upset but maybe they don't know it's out or and you know it's, of course it's not the exact detail but it's got a lot of information but anyway so yeah um i'll show you two pieces of it at, at, the, at the end but so here is the eighth which is a news channel reveals the schedule of Sudani's visit to Washington. So it'll be a week long. He's gonna. Uh, he's our, at the time of them writing this. He had already arrived in Washington D.C. Um, he began. Oh, and let me just tell you, they are so excited in Iraq. Um, the military escorted, not escorted, but lined the carpet as he walked to his plane. Um, they keep showing that over and over on their TV. They have this like commercial, I guess, where it's showing him. And I'll show you the image. It's very um, stately, trying to make him look like a power figure. I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> if you saw Saturdays, I did a post on Saturday. That image is in there also. But So they have that. And then they have these like tablets pop up and it says these are the goal of Sudani's trip to Washington and one comes up and it has the first goal and then the second and that's like a something they're running in between you know when one show's ending and another show's starting they're showing that so they are very excited about this trip okay uh, let's see mm, here on the 14th he met with Brett McGurk, Amos Huckstein, which he is um advisor to the US President for Internal Affairs. Hmm. Then tomorrow he's gonna meet with the President, Blinken, Austin, Adameo, Wally Adameo, who's the Treasury Secretary, Homeland Security guy, Mayorkas. And Jake Sullivan and some of these people he's already met um, he met them at the World Economic Forum he met them at the UN in New York so it won't be a first time and then what Brett McGurk was you know he is the White House coordinator for Middle East Affairs he can pop up in Iraq anytime he wants so also it says he will hold a number of important economic meetings including the president of JP Morgan which we all know is Jamie Demon, Jamie Diamond, and representatives of U.S. companies, the Chamber of Commerce, and U.S. energy companies. So that is Texas. Thursday, it looks like Thursday he's scheduled to go to Texas. He's going to meet with energy companies, something called the Baker Institute, which I was later informed is actually out of Rice University, and prominent members of the Iraqi community that are there so he's got a lot to do every day is just jam-packed with stuff all right but isn't it interesting jamie diamond is the only one well his name isn't there but that we know that's who the president of jp morgan is it doesn't say the president of bank of america or the president of city <laughs> but they may be there but anyway so he's also going to be interviewed with cnn there's another one too, something press. Yeah, so um, that's that. Okay, this is a good, here's the image. Look at this. They got the, to me that looks purple, but I don't know, is that a red carpet? The flags there, this like these marble corridors. And he's tiny, he's a little man. He's not as little as a body, but um, he's, and not that it matters. I know. I know. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. 
anyway, um, from from Rocky TV, they're reporting. Sadani accompanies accompanies the largest delegation in the history of Iraq to America, which reached 135 individuals and included names sanctioned by the American Treasury. Hmm. And those individuals are going to be treated different in the that packet that I told you. Um, some people already have visas, so they can enter one way. Um, there's non-Iraqi traveling with them. They have to, <clears throat> excuse me, they have to go somewhere else to get like a temporary visa. I mean, all of this is in the same area, but yes, that's how specific that information is so um it's of course i read it right because i'm just um intrigued by all of this but i thought hmm name sanctioned by the american treasury but they're here i guess they're going to be pleading please take me off that list i don't know but we'll see so washington discussions expectations of achieving achieving great economic results that's what i'm talking about great right so the visit which was described as historic so if you were going to read an article this one is the one to read and i have bolded again what was important to me right so there's this one and then this next one the prime minister in washington iraq opens its doors to economic and investment partnerships see the word again partnerships all right there he is in his plane making him look all studious and stuff so this was a good one too and this is very positive listen here's one of the establishing a bright image for iraq here a uh, real investment in the future through activation of the strategic framework agreement so they really want that activated investing in the future uh, Iraq is an attractive environment for investment international support international support for the Iraqi government's efforts to enhance stability I think that's it so and that's how that's why I put those in the order I put them in I think those are the best articles that summarize the weekend uh, happenings right for Iraq okay so we'll go down there's another one experts believe that Sudani's visit will be successful in opening the door to foreign investment in Iraq they use the same picture different words though there's different wording let's see especially this uh, also the Iraqi banking system has become responsive to global requirements and K2 international company I don't know what that is. I'm going to look that up. I'm sure some of you know. I'm not familiar with that, but I will look that up. Um, the K2 International Company, unless, is that a company? K2? I was thinking maybe that was a grade of company. Like there's K1, K2. I don't know, but maybe that's the name of it. It's currently working to rehabilitate the sanctioned banks to protect the rocky funds. Look at that. Because now that they're out of the DFI, they need protection, right? Maybe, maybe. And the government is also proceeding with its reform plans to control the movement of funds and know where they come from and where they go and blah, blah, blah. So that sentence is not in that previous article, right? But yeah, so these are kind of long and they do get, it's repetitive. But like I said, there may be one or two sentences in one article that's not in another. And there's some people who like to just read everything, right? Which I don't mind. I might be one of them. <laughs> so this article, even though it came out earlier in the day, it was dated tomorrow. And it does say Monday evening, uh, he'll meet Biden. And Sunday, he met with, oh, no, no, no. So he's going to go to the Pentagon, say that. Where he will meet with Defense Secretary, the Under Secretary, the U.S. Treasury. It says, and then hold an expanded meeting with the U.S. Treasury. 
Under Secretary, in the presence of the Finance Minister, she's here, and Aaliyah Locke, he's here. All right, um, and that thing also lists like all the people that are here. <laughs> all right, anyway, so um, yeah, so then this just says Sunday. On the second day of his official visit, he met with Amos Huckstein. That's a weird name, huh? But anyway, and some other people, and some of the people that were there with them. So if you want to read that, you can. But again, here's the Activate the Strategic Framework Agreement. All right, so other news. So they are back to regular. Uh, the kids went back to school, I believe. Um, the people are back to work. Matter of fact, um, they have such a problem with traffic that they're, um, what's the word, stacking? I don't know. That's, I just, I can't think of it. But they're changed work times to have less people on the road, right, at the same, same time, like, you go to work at 8.30, you go at 9.30, you go at 10.30, right? Well, it didn't work. But anyway, so that's how I know. They're back to work. They apparently did not get their extension. Uh, they wanted to extend the holiday till Tuesday, but it doesn't look like that was granted. So here is, I just thought this was interesting. This guy is a previous. Yeah, so here's that guy, remember? Is that Shab Shabandar? <laughs> um, they're running his tweet again and running his, his article again where he's giving praise for Sadani that he puts the interests of Iraq above all considerations. So I thought that was interesting that they ran it again. And it is a new date. Okay, so when yesterday's podcast or whatever ended the strikes had just started um from um actually now they know there was like either four six or eight different places where all these rockets were coming from and two of them are actually in a rock <laughs> but I don't know why they're making such a big deal about that. They know that there's Iranian-backed militia in Iraq. So, yeah, of course they participated, right? But, um, yeah, so while, you know, who knows if Sadani was in air, in his office, whatever. But while that was happening, Sadani was talking with Ben Salman. They haven't been printing his name. Here here we go. Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And they still left off some stuff too. But um, they were talking about what, what was happening. What was going on. And how do we get this, you know, under control. So, of course, they want, and I believe that it was timed perfectly um, as... Sudani was making his way here. <laughs> They're definitely going to be part of the conversation, right? Ar Iran will definitely be part of the conversation. Okay, let's see. Central Bank approval to transform the industrial bank into a joint stock company. So it looks like they are um, taking a privatized, probably state-owned bank and making it a public stock that they'll have on their um stock exchange so that happened oh i left out the a and there's more about that if you want to read that i thought this was an excellent example of what will happen to us all if we go digital citizens complain about banks and a banking expert confirms iraqis are slaves to loans but really what it is it's not that they're enslaved to the loans it's enslaved that their money goes right to the card, right? And then the loan payment is taken right off the card. 
And I know, yes, they took the loan and they should pay it. But here in America, I don't know, because there's other countries that listen. We have a saying called Rob Peter to pay Paul. And you juggle, right? If you have control over your money, you can say, well, I know this is due on the 21st, but this other bill is due on the 9th. So I'm going to use this money that should pay this thing that's due on the 21st to pay what's due on the 9th. And hopefully some more money will come in, right? And I'll pay, then I'll pay what's due on the 21st, right? But when when your money goes straight to a card or an electronic account, as soon as it goes in, they can take it out and you have no control. And that's what the people, not all of them, obviously, but some of them are dealing with. And there's here's the part. I put it in bold, the part that I thought was um, most important, or at least important, I should say. But yeah, if, if you want to read that and see what future they want in store for us, there it is. Um, and this was a pretty big announcement. An Iraqi bank announces the adoption of an advanced Swiss system and the distribution of high cash profits. So... It's that, um, oh, and this sign here that, that they, they're showing, here's the translation, if you want to read that. I'm not going to go over this because time is dwindling, and I do want to show you that map and something else. See that Swiss T24? That is that Tomenos, and it's the same bank, it's the National Bank of Iraq, but I guess they had a meeting with the shareholders, explaining to them the difference now. And they got their dividend payment, right? Isn't that what a um, ha high cash profits? I think that's a dividend, right? But they don't call it that. I don't know. I could be wrong. But anyway, so that's big, big changes. And as they get more successful and more money, they'll this will be happening for more banks and more companies, right? So that's awesome. And I think I put the other one here as well. No, I didn't. Oh, I forgot to. I'll get rid of that space. Okay. So here are the military. Oh, look at that. Here's the military articles. Uh, it, this really seems kind of fishy. I, I don't want to say. I don't know. There's some words that could be said. Some conversation. But it's everyone knew this attack was coming right um everyone knows israel has three or four different missile interception systems up and ready to go at all times right so iran kind of knew there wasn't going to be much damage done if they really wanted to inflict damage and i know i'm going to sound crazy <laughs> But I only know this from listening to conversations, right? Um, if they really wanted to cause damage to Israel, they would have done more indirect attacks in other places. I'll just say that. Because most people know if you just bomb Israel that those systems come into effect and get most of the rockets get exploded or whatever, right? But, and then the people, Israel has a really, it seems, elaborate system of underground shelters. So they run these sirens and then the people run to the underground thingies. But so there was some damage, but I'm sure they could have inflicted more, right? So it was this really, like, could they have done more? And the answer is yes. So, was this just a message? Some people are saying that they're showing Israel that they have weapons that they could attach other types of heads on. Not nuclear, but atomic or hydrogen or something. I don't know. But that's why I said, you know, there's going to be more um, talk about that. And so now Iran is like, okay, we're done. That that was our response. 
this is over. And they even said, according to Article 51 of the NATO, blah, 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 something, we have a right for self-defense, and that was their act of self-defense. So now if Israel responds, then they're, they're being aggressive, right? And I don't know, the whole thing is just a mess. But anyway, so here we came out and said, we do not seek conflict with Iran, but they're lying. <laughs> In my opinion, that's my opinion. Although you can go back and find documents from 20 years ago. Anyway, all right, so. Let me just show you. Oops, wrong thing. So here is the map that was included. See, 40 pages, page 40. And see, they have Washington circled. Washington, Texas, and Michigan. So I don't, I think it was supposed to be Washington, D.C. But I don't know. I could be wrong, but we'll find out. Um... And then this page here, even though this is an Arabic, I did translate that. It's like a little history. It's a history of Michigan. It's a little history of Texas. <laughs> and I think the other one was the history of Washington, D.C. Uh, so I thought that was interesting. So whoever is given this packet um, <laughs> will also get a little history of those three places they're visiting so yeah um let's see what's the next uh yeah i'm not going to show that but anyway so let's see what this week brings it's very exciting i don't they're not going to change the rate in my opinion and be ready if you guys look at all the other sites with the guru chatter and all that stuff be ready to be on a roller coaster ride because they're gonna be um yeah anyway i'll just say that but in my opinion um they're not going to change the rate while he's here because that will look like he had to come here to get permission to do it right and granted you can say well it's the same thing if he leaves here and he goes back to iraq and then changes it still looks like yeah, but at least it'll look a little bit less that way. But definitely, if they were to change the rate while he was here, it would definitely look like he had to come here and we allowed it, right? And they're not going to do that. But it's all good. Um, and I really do think some spectacular things are going to come out of it, whether we get to see it or not. You know what I mean? Um because it's 21 years it does it's time for them um to if they're not going to release them totally let them get to the next stage oh yeah and there's another article new era so that's that's wording and it's in here oh let's see i think i could find it did it pop up okay era um oh no i'm not gonna be able to find it but here new phase i wonder can i can you say the phrase no but anyway the phrase new era is in here and in one of these articles matter of fact it's the one it's a golden title uh no but anyway, yeah, so they're expecting a lot to come from this. So we'll see what this week brings. All right, I hope you had a good weekend. It rained here. It was cold and rainy, but whatever. I'm glad to be here, glad to be alive. And yeah, so accumulate while we wait for the rate to appreciate. Don't miss any meals. Pay all your bills. And um, enjoy the rest of your morning, night noon whatever time frame you're enjoying this content oh if there's a subscribe or join or follow or whatever button wherever you're looking at this or listening click that so when i do update if everything works as it is supposed to you'll be notified and yeah
All right. Until next time. Thanks.